Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to the Retro Room. Now in front of me here, I do have eight of the uh, Kenner, the real Ghostbusters figures by Hasbro, if that makes sense. Uh, I will explain why I have uh, two of each. I do have a European version as well as a US version here. It should make a bit more sense while I have this set up in a moment. And I also have a bonus item as well, which I will do towards the end of the video. But for now, let's take a look at the Kenner, the real Ghostbusters figures by Hasbro. Okay, so here we go. I shall be using Winston to uh, help me explain the differences between this one, which is the uh, US version, and underneath uh, the European version of the same character. So the figure and its accessories are exactly the same whether you've got the US version or the um, European version. S slight differences with, with the packaging though, uh, not just with the card back but as well as the, uh, you know, the plastic clamshell on top, but I'll go through that in a second. Uh, what we'll do, I'll start from the top to the bottom and then I'll do the same on the back. So let's make a start. If we go to the top right hand corner, the US version, you can see there it says ages 4 plus. It does say the same on the European version except it's got a white circle around it. Moving down to the character name below the logo, US version Winston Zeddemore and Chomper Ghost Figures. On the European uh, version of this, however, it just says Winston Zeddemore with no mention of the ghost that comes with this particular set of figures. And then on the US, you can probably make out there, it says, I ain't afraid no ghost. And then the European version, it does say the same thing, however, it is in many other languages. So obviously uh, it does make that space to put the Chomper ghost on there more restrictive and look more cluttered than it already does. Moving a bit further down near the bottom, we have there it says Action Zapping Rain with Neutrino Blaster and Proton Pack accessories. And as you probably guessed it on the European version, it does say the same thing right at the very top here, except it's repeated in other languages. Just moving on to the uh, plastic on top, uh, there's not an awful lot of difference, it's just the depth. You can see uh, the US version there, it's uh, quite shallow, and then on the uh, European one, it's a lot deeper. Uh, I'm not too sure why they've done that. Um, I assume it was to get perhaps this space bigger, uh, to fit all these languages in. Maybe, I'm not too sure. We'll just move on to the back of each. So there we go, uh, US version. Join the real Ghostbusters in their ghost chasing pursuits. We have the same thing on the European one, but funny enough, again, it's in a lot of other languages. Also, this text here is repeated on there. Uh, again, repeated many, many times in different languages. The pitch underneath is exactly the same for both, except for the character names. Uh, on the US version here, we have the character name, which ghost comes with that character, plus a little bio of each character. And on the uh, European ones here, it's just the character names with no uh, ghost information or their character bios. Below that, we do have uh, the uh, Slimer or the Green Ghost and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Again, the US version, a little bio there of the character, no such thing for the uh, European version. And again, on the US version, we do have uh, a little picture there, three pictures of, uh, that's Bankman, just explaining how the accessories work, and it's, there's no mention on that whatsoever on the, the European version. So. You know, that's the only real difference between the two. It's not really anything to worry about. If you do happen to have the European versions, there's nothing wrong with them at all. It's just, uh, you know, US versions do have more detail on them and it's not as cluttered. Also with the European versions, it does, they all come with these little booklets inside of them, uh, which is a bit annoying as they do get in the way and looks a bit naff. That's just my opinion though. 
and obviously US version we don't have anything else in there apart from the figure and its accessories. So I did pick up the European versions first and I've kept these all you know in good order but when I was in Las Vegas I did see they had all four of these off the shelf so I picked them up so the plan is I'm going to keep the US versions as it is and then I'm going to open up the European versions for display purposes. So what I shall do now I'm just going to double check that I've got the right figures with me because I don't want to be opening up the wrong ones uh, unintentionally there. So uh, I'll be back in just two ticks. Okay, we're good to go. I've double checked, triple checked, and I do have all the European versions with me. So we'll start with Winston as he is already out. So it's Winston uh, with the Chomper Ghost, and I will go through the other ghosts for the other figures. So I've been waiting to open these up for a long, long time. So let's get these open. strong glue on there. There we go, there's that little booklet. Let's just see what it is while it's dropped out. Let's see what the fuss is all about. Um, it's just a choking hazard warning leaflet in a lot of different languages. So that's, yeah, okay. So let's have a look. We'll start with Winston. Come back to the accessories in just but a moment. Get myself organised here. And there we go. So I don't have any of the original figures to compare. Uh, I Obviously, when I was a kid, I had, well, I think I had virtually everything. See, yeah, they're good. I think I virtually had everything uh, from the collection. Uh, obviously, no longer do have, but never mind. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have these again. Yeah, these are quite interesting, actually. They're um, made of quite a soft, sort of rubbery plastic. Uh, I don't quite remember that from the original ones. But yeah, so there, there's Winston. As I mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, it's just his, his eye application, uh, his right eye, our left, it's uh, been applied a bit too far that way, so it just looks like it's got one eye looking that way, and one looking straight ahead, but that's absolutely fine. Obviously wearing his, uh, I don't know what colour you'd call that, maybe turquoise, uh, jumpsuit, All the painting on here looks pretty good. Just a little bit on his uh, elbow pad thing. Uh, it's just a little bit of application. That's not quite made it on, but uh, it doesn't look that bad. It looks fine. Over on the eye and his uh, elbow pad there, it looks pretty good. The logo on his uh, shoulder looks pretty good. Articulation wise, it's very basic. Obviously you have both the arms, both the legs and the head turned. So you've got five points off articulation in total. So let's have a look at Chomper Ghost. And there's Chomper Ghost. Yeah, I don't really have much memory of these. Yeah, it's do kind of remind me of the uh, old Monster in My Pockets where it's just a, uh, you know, a single colour plastic item. But there is a lot of detail on here. You can see some teeth at the front. There's a tongue. He's got his arms there. It's on the sides. He's got some sort of mohawk sporting on top there. Yeah, sort of a cross between a duck and, um, yeah, like a critter or something. Yeah. So that's Chomper Ghost. Of course, we do have the uh, Proton Pack and Neutrona Wands. Carefully remove this. There we go. So, looks very much like the uh, Proton Pack in the cartoon. We do have a nylon cord here. Go between the Proton Pack and the Neutrona Wand. Let's uh, put this on his back. 
like so. And let's uh, guess then this would be the best place to put it. Yeah, it fits on really easily. No trouble getting that on. And then you just twist the end piece here and the Introna wand fires the parcel thrower. Yeah. Obviously, the, the Trailer Wand isn't much like the uh, one in the cartoon. It was, uh, well, it had a sort of brown uh, brown handle. The tip was more pointy from memory anyway. And I think this should be able to fit on his uh, Proton Pack, if I remember correctly. But I don't see how it's going to work. I guess it does. Here we go. There we are. There's Winston with his uh, Proton Pack. Okay, so that's Winston. I'll quickly open up the others. Egon's up next. Again, sort of wearing a very similar colour to uh, Winston, but it's darker. Egon with his uh, Mr. Whippy hair. I forgot he had a bit of a ponytail. Again, made of a soft sort of rubbery plastic. The painting on here is pretty good. I can't see anything sort of shouting out at me that, uh, see otherwise. Egon, and let's see what ghost he has. Uh, he has the, so he has the Gulper ghost, which I actually do remember this one for some reason. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, just one color item but it is uh, detailed enough. Again, with the teeth, the face uh, has a little uh, like a poo emoji here, there. Nothing on the back, and just like a free clawed ghost. Now the proton pack and the trainer wand. Are the same, except Egon does have a more of a sort of pinky particle thrower colour to his uh, the Trader wand. So let's pop his proton pack on. Get him ready. There, so we have Winston and Egon. Next up we have Ray with uh, the Rapper Ghost. Let's fetch out Ray. Yeah, I never knew why they made Ray a bit fat in the cartoon. Right. There we go, he's out. I must say, these are packaged really well. That was not going to come out. I mean, none of these so far come out without uh, having to yank them out of the packaging. So at least they're safe. Yeah, he's always on the podgy side, wasn't he? I don't know why they decided to go with that. But there's Ray, Ginger Ray, with ginger eyes. He's got the more traditional beige uh, coloured jumpsuit. Again, no real uh, problems with the paint application. Logo's on there, all nice. And then he has the wrapper ghost. There we are. Oh, this one's actually a lot softer in material. These ones are quite solid, especially uh, this one. He's really messed up and solid. But yeah, he's a. Uh, as you can see, I can. Put his tail there quite easily without any issues. Again, it's just one colour, but we do have a lot of detail there with the uh, little sculpt here. Cheeky grin. And Ray's proton pack, and he has obviously an orange uh, particle throwing stream. We'll put yours on there, like that. So there's Ray. I might put Egon's on the side as well. That's why he's falling over. There we are. Ray with uh, Rapper Ghosts. And lastly, we'll have uh, Pete Venkman. 
And there we go. There's Pete's with uh, yeah some green eyes. Let's uh, pull them out. If I can. There we go. It's also so bad. There we are. Pete sporting a a brown jumpsuit there. As I mentioned, he does he does have this uh, weird sort of green eyes. Paintwork again. It's uh, I can't really see any issues with the paint. It looks good. No real issues. I'd say probably on his uh, legs here, from my angle, for way I can see anyway, the brown does seem to um, go a bit lighter towards the bottom there. But uh, I'm not sure if it's the light in here or it's something else. Peter Venkman, and I didn't see what ghost he had. What ghost does he have? So Pete has the Grabber Ghost, which is this little dude here. There we go. He's a cool little dude, actually. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, some sort of like goblin-like creature. Has some spikes going down his back, little tail, and he's got a bit of a, I don't know, frightened look on his face there. Loads of detail on the teeth, his tongue sticking out. Actually looks a bit angry with his eyes, yeah. So that's grab a ghost. I don't know what he's grabbing. And finally Pete's proton pack, the Trader Wand with a green particle stream. I always have this memory of these things, you gotta push them in and out to get them to move around, but um, that might just be my bad memory. There we go, Pete, let's uh, get you all proton packed up. There we go. These are nice little figures. Uh, pricing wise, let me get these into the shot a bit better than you see them. So pricing wise, uh, I think originally when these came out in 2020, these were about 18 or 19 pounds each. Uh, I did pick up these European versions. Uh, I think it was Ray and Winston came from a, a online shop. I think it might have been Comics and Cocktails actually. These, and they were both about 14 pounds each, so a bit cheaper than uh, they originally were. And Egon and Peter I got from eBay. Again, they're about 18 pounds each, so uh, they weren't that expensive either. The US versions, um, I got Pete, Egon, and Ray for 14.99 each in dollars, and Winston was 18.99 for some reason. Pop the counter, I reckon. So yeah, these are the real Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Nice little collection. Uh, I am pleased I did get at least the uh, US version as well because I really wanted some open examples of these to have it out on display. And that brings me on to the bonus item. Right, the bonus item. So for me, I believe there is a fifth member of the uh, Ghostbusters team which I don't think gets enough recognition. It's something practical. He's right. We need something that everyone in this town can get behind. We need... a symbol. Something that appeals to the best in each and every one of us. Something good. Something decent. Something pure. it is the Ecto-1. So I did not pick this up in uh, Las Vegas. However, I did see it out on the shelf there for, I think it was about $44 or thereabouts. But uh, here in the UK, it was on sale for £26, so I snapped it up. Again, it is the European version, so we do have all the different languages on there and stuff. Um, but it doesn't matter because it's the content inside that we're after. So obviously it's in the front of the box there, uh, very reminiscent of the original. 
On the top, it's the same image as the front, uh, albeit a bit smaller. Side of the box, we can see the vehicle there. On the back, a nice side shot there of the vehicle inside the box with its listed action features. On the side, it's just much like the other side of the box, just the uh, side of the vehicle. And underneath, again, the same image as on the top of the box and on the side. So I'm gonna open this up. I've opted for this kind of wrangle because it's quite big. So um, yeah, I'm gonna need, I don't think the top down view is gonna work on this one. Stand by while I just open this up. Right, so let's uh, open the side open. I'm very gentle with this because I do want to keep the box. Careful. There we go, right. This is coming out. There we go. Oh, it's wrapped up quite well, actually. So, we do have another piece in the box, which must be the uh, gunner seat on top. And what else is in there? And uh, some kind of booklet. And there's something else in here. Let's reach it. Oh, okay. Uh, the dreaded stickers. So we'll have fun putting these on. I'm quite picky about where the stickers go. Right, let's. Uh, Get this stuff out of the way. So let's look at the vehicle first, shall we? I must say it's wrapped up really nicely. There we are. It's, uh, I think this is the first time I've had my hands on one uh, since the early 90s. All right, I think I'm going to swap camera angles. I think it'd be best if we went top down on this one. Okay, here we go. Uh, apologies if the sand went a bit off then. I uh, forgot to plug the old microphone in. Uh, it's back in now, so hopefully we're, the sound's back to normal. So yeah, I think this is easier to explain. So yeah, the Ecto-1. As I've mentioned, I've not really seen this for a very, very long time. I have seen it at uh, various toy shows and stuff, but um, yeah, it's nice to see it again. It really does bring back a lot of memories. So we did have the gunner seat as well. Again, wrapped up all nice. Oh, we have another ghost. Uh, I doubt it'll tell us what it is. Yep, there is no mention of the name of this creature on any of the literature. So uh, if you happen to have the US version of this, um, perhaps you could let us know in the comments what this particular ghost is called. Again, like the figures, a nicely uh, sculpted item. Uh, I just wish I knew what his name was. Looks like he's squatting for a poo. Yeah. Anyway, that's the ghost, but we are talking about the uh, gunner seat here. So it comes with a seat belt. It's trying to work. I'm sure it goes on that way around. Yeah, that makes sense because that'll go in there. I can't fit in there. Like that. There you go, put the view for you. Yeah, it should go like that. The feet will be this end, the head end. Yeah, there we go. Now, I'm pretty sure I took mine off, my original version, because I found it annoying. I, I think from memory, I wanted this to look like exactly like it did in the film, which it obviously doesn't because it's based off the cartoon. So let's look at some of its features. So obviously we just talked about the gunner seat on top, with uh, the various Natrona wands and stuff on top. It does swivel, but it's quite a stiff piece. We do have opening doors on the side there, with an uh, interior shot of the uh, Actor one dashboard. Obviously space there for a sticker, which I'll come back to in a moment. 
Obviously the door opens, the rear doors don't open. And then we've got the back here and I think there's uh, something we need to press to get this to open. No, we just put on the door. There we go. Inside we have the uh, claw to uh, grab the ghost. We'll just have a look at the instructions here actually. And yet apparently you can either have the chair on top or inside. So we'll keep it on top for now, but yeah, it, it can go inside. There is a space, uh, you can quite see it, just next to the claw, there is a hole there for it to push into. Right, to get this claw worked, I don't remember this claw for some reason, but yeah, we pull the claw out. As you can hear, it's on a ratchet. So that's full extended now. So what we need to do to get this to go back in, just inside on the ceiling, you can just to like make it there, there's a little hook. So we have to wrap around this nylon cords, around the hook. I don't have five-year-old hands anymore, so this is a bit tricky. There we go, it's now around the hook. And then we simply, move some things out of the way, move the car forwards. Mind you, there's no traction on it. Well, anyway, you move the car forwards, and as you do, it retracts the hook, like so. Yeah, I really don't remember this, this hook option on here. I remember this just being free moving. Yeah. Ah, that's how you do it. Now it's coming back to me the exhaust so you move it over to the right and it will engage the uh, ratchet mechanism move it back over to the left and the vehicle can move freely ah uh, yes coming back to me now so we'll have a quick look at the stickers we will chuck on the license plate first Probably a bad idea of me doing this live on camera, but there we go. There we go, there's one. Looks all right, actually. The second one, hopefully you can see that all right. There we go, that's on there. We'll stick with the back and put the smaller of the logos on. Try and get this centered as best I can. There we are, that's the rear one on. Oh, we have the rear window as well to press on. Why well, didn't make out Clear plastic, I don't know, but there we go. This might be a bit tricky to get on. Start the corner. There we go, one rear window. Go on nicely as well. I'm doing quite good so far. He says, I'm now gonna mess one of these up, I can feel it. Right, side of the door. I can remember on the uh, Eagle Moss Hero Collector Ecto-1, which I'm still waiting for the parts for. Um, yeah, they supply stickers as well for the door, which I thought took the mech, considering it's a 1,400 pound model. And the last sticker, which can go on the other side, like so, just carefully. No need to rush. And there we go. We now have a complete Echo 1, or Ecto 1 even. So, there we are. The uh, US versions of the uh, real Ghostbusters, their European counterparts, and the bonus item of Ecto 1. Just to uh, reiterate, there's nothing wrong with the uh, European versions. 
I just really wanted to have uh, some some display pieces as well as uh, items in the original packaging. So I decided to get the US versions for that purpose, just because they have a little bit more information on the cards than their European versions do. But that is it for this video. In the next one, I shall be taking a look at the Hot Wheels Batman 1989, 1982 slash 2023 maybe. Batmobile. If you do enjoy my content, please do consider subscribing. And until the next one, I'll see you later.